LGBT Pride events, the perfect places for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and loads of other people to come together and celebrate who they are. Right? Well, not according to this lot. These events are often not fully inclusive to bi people. So this is an opportunity for us to say, actually, we're going to create our own space. They've decided to do something never done before in the UK and try and organise a major Pride event specifically for bisexual people. Uh, OK, cool. Show of hands for the 9th of March. It can be quite difficult trying to fit in within the LGBT community. There's definitely a lot that I've had about being a slut and oh, you just want everything. For the past 11 months, we've been following the campaign to get a bi Pride. Can they do it? I'm so worried, yeah. Um, you put an event on <laughs> and you ask people to come and you know, and you just don't sell tickets. Along the way, we've been trying to find out why, whether it's mental health or sexual violence, research suggests bi's have it tough. Bi people have to live every day just moving through a world that kind of just doesn't get you. Bisexual. I don't get how two people can be at both sides, straight or gay. Curious people, like they don't know what they want in life. We've also been meeting people who say their lives have suffered massively just through being bi. Bisexuality is seen by a lot of people as just a type of porn, meaning two women and one man, and that definitely influenced what happened to me. Why would you not want to date a guy that's been with a guy before? It's like an insecurity thing because I'm quite jealous and that's like more people to be jealous about. people gathering today to march with us at Pride in London. We're going to have uh, 100 people in the parade and we're selling these absolutely lovely silicon wristbands, one in the, the bi pride flag colours and one in the pan pride flag colours and then at 12, hopefully if it runs some time, we'll be heading off down in the parade itself and marching and having fun. Ah yes, Pride in London, one of hundreds of Pride events that already go on all around the country celebrating the entire LGBT community. So if bisexuals can happily take part in this, why do they need their own Pride too? And here's a flower for you! There we are! It's absolutely incredible to see the amount of people that have come out to uh, kind of show their support. Um, but I mean, you're probably thinking like, why would we need our own Pride? We get to come to these Prides. Um, unfortunately, though, there's still quite a lot of stigma in the LGBT community. Personally, I've uh, sort of received bad comments from lesbians particularly, saying that, you know, I'm going to be untrustworthy, saying that they don't want to date bisexuals. Uh, yeah, it's not very nice, I and mean, it's, it's happens across the whole bi community. So, we need our own space, we need our own march. Um, we're going to have hopefully thousands of people turn up and uh, all celebrate their own individuality. It's going to be incredible. As a bisexual, I have felt um, prejudice when I'm in LGBT spaces and within the LGBT community. From gay men, um, I get comments like, that's not a real thing, like, and, you know, just Bye for... Now, okay, later. <laughs> yeah, and just for being with my girlfriend, I sometimes can feel uncomfortable in spaces that are specifically for gay men. No, of course I'll be there next year. I mean, I've kept the, I've kept like three fires to myself because I know I'm going to lose them. This is so amazing. The atmosphere is so happy. Everyone here is so amazing. We all know that love is love. But to have such focus on us as a group would just mean the world to so many people who feel the same way as we do. It would be, you know, it would just be fantastic. There isn't a great deal of large-scale, credible research out there about bisexuality, but what research there is suggests bisexuals don't just experience prejudice from the gay community. A lot of bisexual men reckon they're treated massively differently to bisexual women. So how does it feel when so many members of the opposite sex would rule out dating you before they've even met you? 
To find out, we've enlisted the help of a 22-year-old bisexual, Ryan, from Huddersfield. I think there's definitely a huge difference in the way that male and female bisexuals are viewed in society. And just one example is like how, how glamorised lesbians are. Like on porn, you see lesbians all over the place and bisexuals, like female and female. You don't see the same relationship when it comes to male bisexuals and girls watching porn. There are people out there that have a problem with dating bisexual guys, for sure. I am fortunate because I've never had any issues in the dating world, but I'm aware that it is a problem for some guys. To open Ryan's eyes, we're packing him off to Glasgow on a date with a girl called Sophie. Except it's not really a date because they're both already in relationships and Sophie's told us she wouldn't date a bisexual. I'm excited to meet Sophie. I think she'll be a regular person with some slightly backwards views. No, I wouldn't hold it against someone for having an opinion, but I do think it's very much worth them trying to take a more open-minded view. There is a very good chance Sophie and I may fall in love. <laughs> so Ryan's feeling confident. What about Sophie? I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm really nervous. We found Sophie after putting up a very unscientific poll on Facebook, asking women whether they'd date a man who'd had sex with another man. Most said no. It's not my preference, but it's never came up as of yet with anyone that I have dated so it's never been something I've had to think about as of yet until now so this will probably be a bit of an eye-opener for me I'll understand it a bit more than what I do really. Well after five long hours Ryan is nearly there. Here goes nothing. Hey Sophie, you okay? How are you? Yeah good thanks. Should we get some shoes? Yeah. Cool. So far so good? So the reason we're here is to talk about sexuality and specifically dating a male bisexual. I think for most people and probably me as well, it's like an insecurity thing because I'm quite jealous and that's like more people to be jealous about. Like you'll like stalk your partner's social media and you'll be like, oh they've liked that girl's picture, they like that person's picture, but if they're bisexual and they're like in everyone's picture and you're like, oh my god, like you just have more to worry about than if you're with someone that's straight. I don't know, surely you judge that person by their character. So if I was like a known player, like someone that would sleep around a lot with just women, if I just slept around a lot with women, I got into a relationship, that could play on my girlfriend's mind. Yeah, that would, that would put me off personally. But then if it was, if I was just like, I'd only sleep with people I had an interest in, whether it be guys, whether it be girls. If I only sat with them because I thought there was like a future or a chance, surely that would be fine if you could trust them. Yeah, I mean, you know that they're interested in both sexes, so you'd, you'd think that you're maybe not able to give them everything that, that they want, but at the same time, from what you're saying, it's not just about that. straight people there's an assumption that they can only be with other straight people because that's what's stereotypical and it's a shame. I mean this, this has opened my mind a lot. I've never been in this situation to have this discussion with a bisexual or a gay person and now that I have I probably wouldn't care going forward because yeah. you're a cool guy. Like, Me 
meeting Sophie and hanging out with Sophie was really cool. I think the thing I've taken away is the reason she gave me for not wanting to initially date a bisexual male were less malicious than I initially thought they would be, less like prejudice. It is very like logical in the way she thinks, but it also seems very personal. I feel like I've learned a lot from him and that I shouldn't be so quick to judge and assume what I would be interested in without getting to know the person rather than just going with what society tells me to go with just because I'm straight. So even though this wasn't a date, would you go on a second date with Ryan? I would, yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sally Owen. I'm a bi activist and I work with the LGBTQ community and I know how biphobic sexual violence affects the community because I was raped by a hetero couple. This is the first time Sally has spoken about the attack publicly. Some of her memories of that night took weeks to come back to her. They were just giving me loads to drink and I was drinking water because, you know, I'd had enough, I didn't want any more, but I kept finding vodka in front of me, not water. I was just hoping they would say soon that they were going to sleep because I was so tired, but they didn't. So eventually I asked them, I said, can I, can I go to sleep now? I'm so, so tired. And I was so drunk that I, I couldn't, I couldn't speak properly. I couldn't walk straight. And then they suddenly seemed really nervy around me, really edgy. Um, and then when I stood up to go to bed, they stood up as well and they grabbed me. And that's when it started. And it went on for hours and hours. And there's a lot of it I don't remember, but I remember, I remember the pain and I remember bits of it, like um, being smacked so hard around the head that everything went white and I couldn't see. Um, I was really scary, but I was too scared to say anything. And I think even if I'd have tried to, because I was so out of it then, I'm not sure I'd have been able to say anything anyway. I was there for maybe six hours-ish in total and the only reason they let me out in the end was because they had work to do. So I went home then and I passed out for a bit and then when I woke up, I went to A&E. Sally says before the attack, the couple repeatedly quizzed her on her sexuality. Bisexuality is seen by a lot of people as just a type of porn, meaning two women and one man, and that definitely influenced what happened to me. Despite the violence, it wasn't until later Sally started to think of what happened as rape. But because only around 2% of reported rapes in England and Wales result in conviction, she was put off coming forward. You didn't decide to go to the police about it? Although I fully support people who do go to the police about sexual violence, by women are seen as greedy, slutty, asking for it. If I'd have even got as far as having it taken to court, which wouldn't happen anyway, it would have been dropped long before that. There's no way I'd win. So historically, the reason why bi people face this kind of prejudice is that society has been really invested in the idea that sexuality is you're either straight or you're gay and there's nothing in between. On the lesbian and gay side of things, it's really, it's been really helpful to them politically, and I, whether or not it's actually the case, to say, 
we were born this way and we can't help our sexualities and therefore we ought to have the same rights as everybody else. And then bisexual people are kind of muddying that message a bit and making it a little bit more messy because if you can be with partners of more than one gender then maybe that suggests that sexuality isn't something that's born into you but there, there, at least for some people there's some level of choice. And so because society has historically been incredibly homophobic, then you've got a bunch of people here who are really invested in not being gay. And you've got a bunch of people here who are really invested in not being straight and not being able to be straight. And then you've got bi people in the middle who are kind of unpopular with both sides because they're messing with the messages that both sides uh, are trying to put across. So over the summer, the Bi Pride team have been going to as many existing LGBT Pride events as they can to try and drum up support for their own Bi Pride. It's now September and we've dropped in on a fundraising event they're running in London. Oh God, just setting up for Bi Lights, uh, which is our sort of Bi Visibility Day fundraising event. Um, but we've just had a bit of a slight stress on our committee that our um, production manager has just resigned, unfortunately. And that was the person who was going to be responsible for basically arranging the, the main kind of event. Um, so we're all kind of pitching in at the moment and desperately trying to, you know, plan for March. And, and this has just been at the top of my mind because I've been focusing on this for the time being but mm. and this is a bit of an indicator because if you I guess if you can't get people here then you, you, you don't stand much chance next March I know I know don't remind me um, yeah so this is it, it's weird because we basically had the whole summer like we've had loads of um, people come up to us on our we've been at loads of prides and they've come up to our stands and said oh it's so great what you're doing like we really need to buy pride we need a space where we can be celebrated and then you put an event on <laughs> and you ask people to come and you know and you just don't sell tickets and i, I don't know if it's because it's a paid event or what the what the issue is but um we just haven't sold enough tickets really i don't know so i'm a little bit stressed <laughs> how many tickets have you sold about 30. and to be honest like if we'd sold out we could have raised something like three thousand pounds towards our event which would have been incredible and would have made so much difference because we just have no money <laughs> at all and at the moment it's like 250 pounds <laughs> which is um which isn't ideal, but hey. So this is like the most despondent I think I've seen you. You get a bit worried about <laughs> next March. I'm so worried, yeah. Um, I think all the optimism of earlier this year is slightly dwindling. We've still got so much to do. Like I said, we don't have a venue, a venue yet. Uh, we don't know if we're going to do a march yet. We don't know if we can close the streets. Um, we haven't got acts confirmed. Um, all we've pretty much done is advertise the date. Like we've got flyers with, with the date on it and stuff. <laughs> so basically everything. <laughs> Oh. But we've got flyers, so... <laughs> Great. Sam is putting a brave face on it, but she's clearly worried there might not be as much appetite for their pride as they'd hoped. And she might well be right. We met Lulu and her friends at a gay bar in Sheffield. For me, as a bisexual person, another event to celebrate the LGBTQ plus community cannot be negative. It's a good thing. It's a good thing um, for sure, yeah. yeah. But I wonder if we're going to end up separating all these things and eventually there'll be a pride for every sexuality every weekend yeah. of the year. And then will we lose our momentum as a minority, as people who... Exactly. 
I think you know, we are better together, all of we us. Are. The more we get together, the stronger we are gonna be, and the better we are gonna face the future about all these things, all these issues, and all the yeah. stigma. Pride that we have now it is enough, and I don't crave a special um, occasion just to represent my part of the community. Like I say, I'm not opposed to it. Um, I'm just not sure if it's the number one thing on my agenda with my sexuality. It's been a bit of a tricky time lately. Um, we have had some financial issues. Basically, we had a massive issue with the bank um, that we were setting up an account with. Um, they took about three or four months longer than expected to set our bank account up, which meant that we couldn't apply for grants, um, we couldn't uh, get any sponsorship, and basically couldn't get any money in. So we've had to um, postpone our 9th of March event. Really, really gutted, to be honest. Do you mind like reading as one of your poems? Um, I don't. What sort of do you want me to read? I've got like loads of different ones. I don't really know what you want it to like be about. I guess one that touches on your mental health a bit. Of this one. Okay. Yeah, I've got one called "I'm Fine." When I say I'm fine, I mean I'm tired. I'm tired of waking up and feeling like I'm not in control of my life. I feel just like a puppet, my body on loan. I'm tired of my mind's thoughts cutting away at me like a knife. I say my mind's thoughts because my mind... I've had mental health difficulties ever since I can remember. Um, when I first started going to the GPs about it, they were very hesitant to give me any sort of diagnosis. They basically just told me I was a teenager and I'd grow out of it. Um, I, even with like self-harm, stuff like that. And obviously for a 12, 13 year old to be going through these things, it's really, really difficult to get across to people that you need help without kind of feeling like you're attention seeking kind of thing. So at the moment, I'm on metazapine. It's an antidepressant. Um, and it basically just releases like serotonin in the brain. It's just like an extra chemical. I do think for me definitely like bisexuality has had an impact on my mental health because I constantly feel like half of myself is missing. If I'm in a relationship with a man, I feel like I can't really talk about my attraction to women. And if I'm in a relationship with a woman, I feel like I can't talk about my attraction to men just because I'm meant to be in a committed relationship and it shouldn't matter who else I'm attracted to. So I do feel like it has had an impact just because I feel like there's always a part of me that's not being true to myself and a part of me is just kind of being left and forgotten. So when you ask me how I'm doing, know that I'm tired. Know to just stop asking because I know I'm getting there and I know I'll be okay. So I'll just say I'm fine. Really good. This is the venue that we'd have been in today. This would have been full of uh, food trucks and people and flags with people coming in and out of those doors. Um, our main auditorium in that big building there. Uh, but yeah, it's all a bit empty today, which is sad. Um, there's probably going to be a wedding or something like that later. Um, but yeah, this is where we would have been had, uh, had the 9th of March still been happening. Yeah, and we were sort of looking at closing the roads and having a big parade and everything, so that would have been um, pretty amazing. Yeah, it's a bit sad. It's not got flags or cheerful pride people or anything like that. We haven't been here since sort of six o'clock in the morning, which is also sad, but I mean, happy about that today. <laughs> it's actually um, not raining as well. Yeah, raining. according um, to the weather <laughs> forecast, it looks like the hours that the event would have been open today, it's actually not going to rain. Mm. <laughs> 
amazing. <laughs> So, is this the end for By Pride? We've now booked um, the same venue uh, on the 7th of September uh, in By Visibility Month. Um, yeah, and we're going to do just this epic, epic event. At the end of the day, this is the first time this event has ever happened in the UK. So, as long as it happens, it's happening at the right time. So, six months delay isn't really the biggest deal. It's like, if we'd done this event now, today, it would not have been what it should have been. And how would you reflect on the last year? <sighs> What a roller coaster. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of the best times and the stressful times, and it's just, yeah, it's been all over the place, but in a very good way. Every time we've hit a bump, we've come back stronger. So, uh, yeah, building a, building a dynasty. Yeah. It's gonna go on for years, forever, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, this is just the beginning.